From here on, we will talk about the quantities that describe how much a data set is spread out from the center. So the most uh, simple one um, would be the range, which is a difference between the limits. Um, in other words, maximum minus minimum. So we already have seen this uh, statistics before when we needed to determine the width of a bin to construct a histogram. So the minimum level of measurement of data to calculate the range should be ordinal and above because you need to be able to find minimum and maximum. So that actually implies um, you can rank order uh, the data, right? So which is a property of the ordinal level of a measurement. So you cannot calculate the range for nominal data either. And like the mean, the range is also sensitive to extreme values in a data set. So let's just work with the same um, the you know data uh, the number of Facebook friends um, like before. So it's easy to calculate the range because um, this is already sorted, and the maximum is uh, two thousand three hundred and forty, and the minimum is this. So twenty two two is twenty three. 18. So that is the range, right? So um, that's the range for the original data, but let's just remove. Okay, so now place just Well, let's remove this, right, because this is the odd one. And now new maximum becomes 121. So that's range one, so range so 121 minus 22, that's 99. It is, right? So if you compare these two ranges, you can see that there's a quite a lot of difference. Um, you know, when there is an extreme value or not. So, um, as I already said, range is also sensitive to the extreme values in a data set. Another useful dispersion statistics is called a, an interquartile range or IQR for short. So, to calculate the IQR, you need to calculate the quartiles first which is a special kind of quantiles. Uh, and then quantiles are the yeah, cut points dividing the range of observations into the smaller and equal proportions. Um, so the number of divided groups is always one more than a specific quantile. So therefore, quartiles are the three cut points that divide an ordered data set into four groups, each comprising a quarter of the data, right? So you have to remember this is a three points, not four points uh, dividing the data set, okay? So the first quartile, um, also known as Q1, or the lower quartile, or 25th percentile, um, is the, uh, the quartile uh, below which the lowest 25% of the data are located. And then the second quartile is Q2, and this is basically the median by definition, or this is also known as 50, a 50th percentile. So the second quartile cuts the data set in a lower half and upper half. And finally, third quartile, Q3, known as upper quartile or the 75th percentile. And so this is the quartile um, above which the highest 25% of the data will be found. So the interquartile range, IQR, is basically the difference between the upper and lower quartiles. So IQR equals Q3 minus Q1.
Okay, so let's find out uh, interquartile range for this number of Facebook friends data. So the data, so to, uh, you know, like, you know, like to find the median, um, you know, you need to sort the data first, and then this is sorted already. And when you have even an odd number of data, so like here, uh, we have 11 um, number of data set. So, you know, easiest um, step to find the uh, IQR is to find median first. So we know the median is the middle number. We know that that is median, right? So that is our Q2. So that's Q2. And now we have lower half. And then Q1 is median of the lower half. So 53 is basically the Q1. And 116 is the median of Q, uh, the upper half. That's Q3. So IQR becomes 116 minus 53. So that's 63. So that is the IQR for um, this data. As long as you know how to calculate the median, then finding an IQR should not be so difficult whether or not you have an odd or even number of data. Um, you can just follow the uh, steps here, then it should be easy enough. So once we know the quartiles, then we can draw a box plot to graphically summarize how the data are distributed. It is composed of the following components. Um, so first, along the vertical axis, in, at the vertical axis of the data values, we have a box, right? And then two lines coming uh, out of the box. Um, so coming out of the, uh, the lower hinge and the upper hinge of the box. So the line inside the box represents the location of the media, so which is uh, you know Q two, right? And the upper hinge, right, um, where the upper quartile is, and then lower hinge is the location of the lower quartile. So by definition, um, the uh, the length of the box, right, or the width of the box is. IQR interquartile range. And the two vertical lines coming out of the box are called whiskers. And then upper whisker stops at the largest data, not the maximum, and the largest data smaller than the 1.5 times IQR. Right? And then likewise, um, so any any um, you know data um that is outside of this range uh, will be flagged as an outlier so that is an outlier and then so the lower whisker uh, is actually stops at the smallest data um, that is larger than 1.5 times iqr below the first quartile and then that dot is um, called an outlier. So this is the um, box plot for the uh, number of Facebook friends data. So a box plot can be drawn upright or sideways, uh, which, whichever way you prefer, as long as it is parallel to the axis with the data values. So here we have um, number of Facebook friends on the horizontal axis, right? And these two um, diagonal bar is called um, the axis break, right? Because this um, celebrity friend is just um, um, too far away from the rest of the data, right? So you cannot really, um, you know, place this uh, data in the linear scale right so this is just so far out right so in that case you can use axis break 
right, that, you know, this x is still um, continuing up to this value. So that's, um, you know, what you need to use when you have uh, extreme data and to um, draw those um, data in a single graph. Um, so the this is a Q1, right? So 53 was the Q1, the lower quartile that we calculated before. And this uh, bar is actually the Q2, 98. That was our median, right? And also 116 was our Q3. And then upper whisker stops at 121. And because this, you know, 2,340 is just too far out, this is a flagged as an outlier. So obviously this will be um, greater than uh, 1.5 times IQR plus Q3, right? And then the lower whisker stops at 22, and because 22 is the minimum value and it's still within the 1.5 times IQR from the first quartile. So this is basically how you draw a box plot. For the um, interval and ratio levels of measurement, measures of dispersion is typically calculated from the mean. So um, the deviance is the distance of individual datum from the mean. So you will have the same number of deviant statistics as the number of raw data. So here, x represents the data, right? So, and as we have seen, x bar represents the sample mean. So that is, that is the mean of the x uh, data, right? And then, so because there's the same number of deviant statistics as the raw data, uh, that's not really summarizing the dispersion of the data sets, right? So we want to have just a single number to summarize the total amount of um, spread or uh, dispersion, right? So you can add all these deviant statistics to have a single number. But if you do that, then you will get zero always for any data because the deviance is the distance from the mean with sign. So if you add them up, then they always cancel each other. So one way to avoid this is to square each deviance first to remove the sign, then add them all up. Um, now that quantity is called sum of squared errors. Right? Now, if you divide this quantity by the number of data minus one, then we obtain a statistics called variance, which is roughly the average square distance of the data from the mean. Now, if you think about it, this is a bit awkward quantity because it's squared a squared value, so, so is the original unit of measurement. So for example, um, if you measured height in centimeter, then the unit of the mean should be the same centimeter, right? However, the variance will be in the unit of centimeter squared. Therefore, you cannot directly pair the variance with the mean because they are in different units. So now we take the square root on the variance to get the original unit of measurement back. And this final quantity is called standard deviation which is the average amount of distance in the data from the mean. So this is basically kind of by showing you the steps to calculate standard deviation. Um, the um, calculation of standard deviation is quite um, involving, but this is a very important statistics. So I strongly recommend that you practice and understand thoroughly how to calculate the um, standard deviation uh, step by step. So um, the very first step in calculating a standard deviation is to work out the um, average of the data first. So in this first column, 
So we have Facebook friends, and this is the raw data, right? So you need to calculate the mean of this data set first by adding, adding them all up and divide this by uh, the number of data, which is 11. Okay, so then that's um, the mean of the data, right? And then once you have the mean, then you have to work out the difference, which is the deviance between each number and the mean. So you subtract this from this, and you subtract this and that, and you subtract this uh, from this. So you get 11, uh, which is the same number of deviance statistics. So, and the next is the deviance, right? So these are the individual deviance from the mean, but if you add all this up, then they cancel each other out, right? So you get zero. So that is the total deviance. You always get zero. So to avoid this, now you have to square each deviance statistics. And then you get these large numbers, right? large values. Now you can add them all up. So that Big sigma sign is the adding sign, adding whatever is on the right here in the bracket. Okay, so what's in the bracket is the deviance, and it is squared. And if you sum them up from the first data to 11th data, the last one, then this is a sum of the squared error, and you get this value. Now, to um, calculate the average amount of a square difference, you divide this value by 10, 11 minus 1 instead of 11, right? So this is what is called degrees of freedom, uh, which I'm going to um, try to explain um, later. And then this uh, value, this quantity is called variance, right? But because this is a squared unit, uh, you want to actually take, take a square root on this variance to get the um, original unit back, right? So now this, um, you, you take the square root of the variance, then you have standard deviation. All right, so uh, now we have seen how to calculate the uh, standard deviation, and I I also want you to understand how to calculate the uh, standard deviation and hopefully you can calculate standard deviation on your own um, when you are given relatively smaller data set. Um, I mean you have you know Jamovi or you know statistical software so really you don't really need to calculate the standard deviation by hand but um, you want to understand how it is calculated so that you better understand um, you know, what it really represents. Right? So here are the properties of the sample standard deviation. So standard deviation measures the average spread, the average amount of spread um, about the mean in the data set. And it should be, so because it is using the mean, um, to calculate the standard deviation, right? So you this standard deviation should be used only when the mean is chosen to represent the center of the data. What that means is that you cannot pair the standard deviation statistics with median, okay? Because standard deviation is the distance from the mean. So it doesn't really make sense to pair this up with other uh, central tendency measure. It always goes with uh, mean, okay? And standard deviation is always positive, and in rare cases, it can be zero when all the data set had the same value, right? And if um, there's a more spread in the data set, then it'll be shown as a larger standard deviation. And as I said, standard deviation has the same a measurement unit as the original observations, um, as opposed to variance where it has squared 
um, unit. Right? And because the standard deviation um, uses the mean, um, it is also sensitive to outliers or extreme values in the data, like the mean was sensitive to those extreme values or outliers. Okay, now um, I think I need to explain why um, the sum of the squared errors is divided by n minus one instead of n in calculating variance or standard deviation, um, as opposed to you divide the sum of the data by n when you're calculating the mean. So um, the reason uh, has to do with um, the concept of degrees of freedom, uh, which is the uh, number of data that can freely vary in calculating a sample statistics. So um, let me use some analogy here to uh, make it more uh, understandable, I hope. So let's say that um, you are given the um, kind of a power or responsibility. You, you're being a coach to select players from the entire Scotland for a Olympic uh, national football team. So as you probably know, the minimum required number of players um, for a team, for a football team is 11, right? So imagine that you are to pick a player by field positions, then there is practically unlimited um, number of possibilities or combinations. So you have this freedom to pick anyone and place any first 10 players on the field, um, except the last one, uh, meaning that once you fill the first 10 positions, then the position of the last member of the team is whatever and whoever it is fixed. For example, you can pick and place them like um, three, four, three. So this is just a, just one example, but you know, in theory, um, you can just do this any way you want, right? If you don't like, say, this guy, then you can just kick him out and then replace this member uh, with other players from the population. And so there's just millions of different uh, possibilities to have a team. But once you fill the first 10 members for the team, then the last member of the team, the position of the last member, is fixed so somebody has to be a goalie right and this is just the same for any position if you fill the first 10 position then the position of the last member is fixed and you cannot change it okay so in calculating a statistics from a sample is like this so basically you See, um, you calculate the sample standard deviation given the sample, right? Say you have a sample of X with all the same numbers. So now your sample size is three and you can calculate. So this is your first sample and X bar for the first sample is Three, right? The mean is the same as the um, the member of the data because all the members are the same in this case, right? So given the sample size of three, um, the sample mean uh, uh, for this sample is fixed to three, and this three is used to calculate the standard deviation, right? So we cannot change this sample mean. Um, to calculate the standard deviation, if you, if you change the sample mean, then you know it'll change the standard deviation. But without changing the sample mean, we can still um, have different samples with the same sample size and the same sample mean of three, right? Having different members. So, for example, in the population, we can have another sample. 
by replacing the first two members with 1 and 4, um, having the same sample mean of 3. So you can freely change the first two members to this one, but once you do that, then the number of the last data, the value of the last data is fixed to have the same sample mean of 3. Right? So in this case, this should be um, 4 right? to have the same sample mean of 3. So this is determined. So you can have actually millions of this. So say x hmm, and 3 equals 2, 2. So you can still replace the members until the last one. So once you change the first two to two, two, then the last one should be five to have the same sample mean of three. And there can be millions of such samples uh, can exist, right? So um, this, you know, the, the sample, um, the collector sample is like your team, right? Um, once the team is fixed, then you cannot change the team. I mean, the, the, the team as a whole, but you can still replace the members until the last member. Because once you change um, the n minus one members, then the, uh, the nth member is actually fixed. Right? So that is uh, a concept of degrees of freedom. So what that means is that not everyone. So you have to actually take away one from the number of observations because not, uh, not all the members can freely vary in calculating a standard deviation. Because if you do that, then you, you're going to change the sample mean, right? So that is the concept of degrees of freedom. So this is just what I've been saying already. Um, so degrees of freedom is related to uh, the number of observations um, you can really change in computing a statistics. So if a statistics is held constant, so if it is a fixed, so in our case, it was mean, right, to calculate another statistics, which was uh, standard deviation uh, in a given sample, then the degrees of freedom must be one less than the sample size. So um, in our case, we had to take away one from the total number of observations in calculating the standard deviation because the sample mean is fixed. So you cannot uh, replace, you cannot use all the members of uh, the data, uh, all the members of the sample to calculate the standard deviation. Um, given the sample. So I, I you know, took this much time to explain what the degrees of freedom is, um, just because um, you have to know the degrees of freedom of whatever statistics you calculate. So it is a standard procedure. You report the degrees of freedom for any statistics, if there is any degrees of freedom involved, right? So um, it is important that you know the concept of degrees of freedom. So there's a such thing as degrees of freedom and don't forget to report the degrees of freedom for any statistics. And this will become um, more important as we go along because there are um, you know, different statistics um, involving different number of degrees of freedom. And so we're gonna just talk more about this degrees of freedom later on. So the notation for degrees of freedom is new. So that is not V, it is new in Greek letter. Okay, so that uh, is actually standing for degrees of freedom. Or in more plain English, people use DF for degrees of freedom or D dot F dot for degrees of freedom whatsoever. Okay, the last measures of dispersion is coefficient of variation or CV for short. Um, this is also known as relative standard deviation. 
and you know which is a dimensionless quantity normalizing the amount of variation by its own mean so more often than not um, variation in sample data scales with mean of the sample so in other words the amount of variation tends to increase as sample mean increases so um, this quantity is useful to compare the amount of variation between variables with different units or widely different means so these two histograms are the distributions of foot width and length of males based on the um, anthropometric survey of american military personnel in 1988 so until 2012 this was the most comprehensive publicly available data set on body size and shape so this um, data set includes measurements of over 140 body parts for nearly 4,000 adult U.S. military personnel. So if we look at the uh, descriptive statistics, uh, the mean foot width is 100 millimeter or 10 centimeters uh, with a standard deviation of 5 millimeter. Whereas the uh, mean foot length is 270 millimeter, which is about um, UK size 9 with a standard deviation of 13.5 millimeter. So in absolute terms, the standard deviation of a foot length is more than twice that of the uh, foot width, right? So does that mean then there is a more variation in foot length compared to the foot width, given the uh, quality of measurement, uh, measurement was same for both measurement? And probably not, because um, as I said, standard deviation typically scales with the mean. And we can see that the mean of foot length is also more than twice the mean of the foot width. So to compare, if there's indeed more variation in foot length compared to foot width, we can um, calculate the uh, coefficient of variation for a fair and square comparison. So, that is quite simple. It is just um, standard deviation uh, of the sample divided by its own mean. So, we just do 5 over 100. Okay, so, that's just 5%, right? And for the uh, foot length, it's 13, 5 over 270. So that's probably another 5. Right? So um, with this calculation, we know that the variation is uh, the between the foot length and foot width measurement is actually the same, right? And this can be actually shown in the histogram, um, assuming that they are um, normalized. So see the spread of the foot width measurement uh, looks almost the, um, the same as the, um, the, the spread of the, uh, the foot length. So, um, the theoretical normal PDF, that's a, you know, a probability density function. So that's kind of a, um, the best fitting curve on this histogram. And it looks like a, and the me measurements um, for both foot width and foot length um, looks like a very symmetric around the center, which is one of the properties of the normal distribution, which is going to be the next topic of uh, the module.